I'm Ben Chertow with PopularMechanics.com. Make sure your tray tables are in their stowed position and your seats are in their upright and locked position because we're about to take a test flight of this, the Airbus A380, the world's largest passenger jet. We watched from the runway Monday as the Airbus landed the A380 in the U.S. for the first time. The European airplane manufacturer has spent 18 years and tens of billions of dollars developing the double-decker plane, and the first production models are now just rolling out. But that's two years too late, and the delay has cost Airbus its cargo plane customers, and as of yet, no American carrier has bought one. Critics feel the plane is too big. At almost 240 feet long with a 260-foot wingspan, the Super Jumbo's 1.3 million pound takeoff weight requires airports to reinforce runways and taxiways. And it requires some pretty powerful engines. So these Rolls-Royce engines here combined produce 80,000 pounds of thrust, which as we learned yesterday is equivalent to the power of a thousand Hummers with the big engine pulling at once. And that's what gets this enormous plane off the ground. Just make sure you don't stick your head in there. When you do stick your head through the A380's right, cabin door, however, ahead. it's breathtaking. A staircase dominates the roomy first class entryway, and the rest of the plane is dominated by seats. Lots of seats. With 550 passengers loaded in here among three classes, would the A380's massive size still feel so roomy? I decided to find out. Starting in the back of the lower deck, I set out to see how long it would take to walk the length of the plane. Okay, there were only 190 or so passengers on it, but they were all standing up. A recipe for aisle gridlock in most planes. But to my surprise, I slipped by without even saying excuse me. That's because the aisles on this configuration of the airplane, and it's an Airbus configuration, individual carriers can choose their own, have significantly wider aisles than traditional cabin layouts which might mean the end of being trapped by the beverage cart. By the way, the lower deck of this A380 is almost entirely coach. Airbus must have figured most journalists would find that very familiar because, well, that's where they stuck us all. And then we're passing the galley here to our right, and there's some Airbus people to the left, and to our right is the bar, and now we're entering first class. And as you can see here, there's, well, there's a lot more room. There's a pilot guy there. And then this woman up here puts an end to my walkthrough. Well, because she's guarding the cockpit door. And she's a lot bigger than I am. <laughs> Wait a second. Did I just say bar? Yes. This A380 has a rather large bar for its first class customers. Sure, it's not huge, but come on. This is an airplane with a walk-up bar. It's like the jet-setting 60s all over again. In fact, the A380 has even got a spiral staircase in the rear of the plane that leads up to the upper deck and a business class seating, which of course is very nice and we're all happy for you guys up in business class. But back to the flying. So we just took off and we've reached cruising altitude. The first thing you notice when the plane starts to accelerate is how powerful it is. It seemed like in no time we were climbing and the thing climbs like it's on rails. Much of that has to do with the four Rolls-Royce Trent engines. But a lot of the performance comes from the innovative wing design. What we have been excited, what we have been excited about is as the aerodynamics of the airplane. The wing of the airplane is absolutely amazing. It's it's an 80 foot, 80 foot span airplane. It has 800 square meters of wing. Uh, it's the biggest wing ever built, and uh, it has been. Uh, we are we're all very very excited because the wing is a very significant driver for the performance of the airplane. Uh, the, 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 the performance in high speed and the performance of the low speed of this airplane are absolutely remarkable. And to give you an example, the approach speed uh, at maximum landing weight of this airplane is the same as that of an A320, except that the landing weight is seven times bigger on this airplane than on it. So this airplane approaches at the same speed with seven times the weight of an A320. So that's a that's a So what is it like to actually fly this thing? Finally, as we were taxiing back to the gate, I got my chance to peek my head into the flight deck. In this aircraft, uh, an airport moving map. So we have Kennedy Airport here with our parking position. We have video cameras to guide us through the taxi. Okay. Merci. Okay. Uh, front the park, uh, sur la chaise. We have a flight, zero. We have a flight management system uh, here. Everything reconfigurable. We have a system page in the middle 
and uh, another system page up here and then on the left side the same kind of instruments. On the right side we have an uh, onboard information system which is actually uh, replacing all the paper on board which is on such an aircraft usually around 50 kilos and has to be updated and changed um, many times during uh, one month. So uh, an electronic update process will be much more easy and much more efficient for the airlines. And uh, everything you don't see is the most modern technology available now in uh, aviation. For us, for the pilots of an Airbus, it's just hidden behind everything he already knows. Speaking of familiar things, yeah. In the future, Airbus A380s will be accessed by double-decker jetways, which should make this process a little easier. For PopularMechanics.com, I'm Ben Chertoff.